Well, good evening. Uh, I'm glad you uh, are able to join us tonight for our uh, live stream of our uh, Holy Week devotions. And uh, looking forward to uh, what God has in store for us in our time together tonight. I uh, do want to encourage you to uh, share the stream uh, with people that you know. Uh, share it. Uh, for, you can share it directly from the live feed and um, uh, invite people to, to uh, worship with us during these times. Uh, I do want to take a few moments just to uh, mention a few announcements. Uh, we will be continuing to do these live streams from now all the way through Saturday, uh, 7 o'clock each night. So uh, keep that in mind and um, make every effort to join us that you can. Uh, even if you can't join us live, uh, we will make sure the videos are uploaded uh, both to Facebook as well as to our YouTube page. And um, so you can direct people to either place, either the church YouTube page or our church Facebook page uh, to be able to... Uh, uh, participate in the devotions that we're doing this this week. Uh, also, as a part of our time together on Thursday, we're going to be celebrating Holy Communion, and uh, but we're going to be doing it in a different way. And so, if you have some bread and grape juice, or if you have uh, something, just having something to drink, whatever it may be, a small a small uh, cup of something to drink and a a piece of bread or a cracker or something, uh, have that with you on Thursday night. And as part of our time together on Thursday night, uh, we'll be taking part in Holy Communion. So just keep that in mind and, um, and have that uh, available on Thursday night during our time of devotion. Also, this coming Sunday, obviously it's Easter Sunday, and I'm extremely excited about uh, what we get to celebrate on Sunday. So, uh, keep keep uh, these times in mind at 6.30. Uh, the sunrise service will be occurring uh, that uh, the Beargrass Ruritans uh, sponsor. So uh, that'll be at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday morning. Uh, do uh, keep that in your prayers. And if you uh, feel comfortable in getting out and going, then that will be occurring then. At 11 o'clock Sunday morning, we'll have our Easter service. We'll be doing a Facebook live stream again. I'm uh, thankful that our uh, uh, praise band, or, or many of them, will be a part of that and leading us in worship on Sunday morning and look forward to celebrating uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Sunday morning during our Easter service. Also, just as a reminder, our offering this coming Sunday will be going towards uh, our uh, building fund, and we're using... Uh, the funds that, that go towards our building fund to help retire the debt from our last building project. So keep that in mind and uh, donate if you can. Also, I want to encourage you to share any items of concern or in, any items of praise in the comment section here or message me uh, to let me know uh, what we can share with our church people in regards to things to praise God about during this time as well as any items of concern. Uh, we want to we want to come together as a community and uh, lift these needs up together, and so just keep that in mind and share those if you can. Also, let me know in the comment section that you're watching, uh, if it's you and someone else, then share that too, uh, just so we can continue to build that community, even though we may not be able to be here physically. Uh, this online community, uh, we can still fellowship with each other in this way. So. Uh, now that we've kind of finished the announcements, I uh, kind of get into uh, what we're here tonight for. And so I want to begin uh, with a song. And uh, this song we're going to do tonight is uh, one of our worship songs. And it's a new one for the church. Uh, it's one that's been around for a little while. And our praise band is in the process of learning. It's a song entitled No Longer Slaves. And so if you know it, I encourage you to sing along with me. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to all my No longer slave to fear. I am a child of God, and I'm 
mother's womb, you have chosen me, love has called my name, and I've been born again to your family, your blood flows through my This time we're going to uh, get ready to go to our great God in prayer, uh, thanking God for all of his many blessings and also asking God to move in the many concerns that we have. Uh, there have been uh, many things that have been shared over these weeks uh, to praise God for. Um, we have our medical professionals that are that are working and uh, kind of on the front line to, to help those that, that do come in and that are sick and and, and really putting themselves at risk. Uh, so thankful for them and, and praying God's protective hand upon them. Uh, we're thankful for our uh, governmental leaders on the federal level, the state level, the local level. Uh, they have a difficult job and um, thankful for them and uh, praying uh, God's wisdom upon them as well. Um, thankful for uh, these abilities that we have and, and for, for God using uh, this time to open our eyes. Uh, uh, there have been some lessons that have been learned during this time, and I hope it's lessons that the church, and, and I don't necessarily mean whenever I say this, I, which I hope Rosa's sharing, uh, and, and you know those that are part of Rosa's sharing uh, learn these lessons, but I hope the church in general will, will be 
reminded of these lessons, that the church isn't limited to the building, uh, that, that we, the people, are the church. And uh, the fact that worship doesn't have to take place in the church. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship can take place anywhere where God's people are and where there's one, two, three, or 100, 200, or 300. And so I'm thankful for the lessons that God is teaching us during these times. I'm also thankful uh, for God's word that promises that God is with us, that um, God is working in all things. And the scripture tells us that for those who are his children, that he works all things for the good. So we have a lot to thank God for. And, um, and also just what we're uh, commemorating this week as we um, make our way towards uh, Maldi Thursday and Good Friday and all the events that took place uh, during those days 2,000 years ago, thanking God for sending his son Jesus Christ to the world to, to do that, to face that. And then also thanking God that it didn't stop a Good Friday. So we have a lot to thank God for. Uh, there are many items of concern. I know there are many people that are sick. The hospitals uh, continue to have more and more people going. Uh, but uh, we do want to remember all of those that are sick, remembering those that have lost loved ones, uh, some due to this illness and, and some uh, through accidents and, and other unexpected things. So uh, let's remember all of those who have lost loved ones. Uh, there are a couple names I do want to share with you that have been shared with me. Uh, let's do remember Ray Gorganis. We mentioned him last night, but this is someone that, that was shared uh, yesterday. And then I received a message today uh, that uh, Miss Ann Powell is someone who has been dealing actually with uh, the virus. And um, they are hoping, she, she is showing signs of improvement. They're hoping that she may be able to go home. She'll have to be isolated for a little while, but uh, thankful that God has... Uh, uh, used uh, modern medicine uh, to be able to bring about uh, what we hope is a full and complete healing for her as well. So let's remember her. Um, I, ask your I ask your prayers personally as the pastor of the church that, that God will continue to give me the wisdom uh, to, to lead the church uh, during this difficult time. And for pastors in general, this is a difficult time. Uh, many people are, are being pulled out of their comfort zone. Uh, just some of the decisions that have to be made. So I uh, do request your prayers as well as uh, for church leadership as well. And, and also as we go about this week, pray that God will, will help us to center upon him and that we'll be focused upon the right things this week. Um, let's go to God in prayer and ask God's blessings upon this time and ask God to move in uh, these requests that have been shared tonight. So let's pray. God, you are a great big God. You are a God that has done great things. God, you are a God that moves on behalf of your children. God, you are a powerful God. You're a God that, that nothing in this world or in all of creation is greater than you. God, you are an all-knowing God. God, you know everything past, present, and future. There's nothing outside of your knowledge. And we're thankful that God that everything that's going on, God, there is, there, none of this is, has surprised you. And God, you're working in it. You are bringing about the good in it. God, I pray that, that we would trust your work in this. God, to know that, uh, that your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God, your timing is different than our timing. Everything about you exceeds even our greatest understanding. God, you're simply God, and we praise you for being God. We confess that we fall short every day. We confess that we are sinners, God. We confess that, that, we, that we fail, but God, we also know that you are a loving God who forgives us when we turn to you and confess our sins. God, we are so thankful for everything that you have done, every way that you have moved in our lives. We're thankful for you sending Jesus Christ to this world to die on an old rugged cross for all the sin of the world, God. God, And we're thankful that you offer salvation to all who will repent and believe. God, we're so thankful for the ways that you have provided healing. We're thankful that you're there even in our darkest moments, God, knowing that, that in those deep, dark moments, you're still with us. 
whenever we can't see anything that's going on around us and we're struggling to see that anyone is there, you are there. You are our Emmanuel. Oh God, we thank you that, that you give us these times to reflect upon you, to remember you, to celebrate you. God, the work that you have done in all of our lives strengthens our faith now as we come before you and bring our items of concern to you. God, knowing that you care for every part of our lives and knowing that you love every person on this planet, God. You knit each of us together in our mother's womb. You know everything about us. So, God, you love us. You care for us. And we lift all of these burdens up to you. The ones that have been shared as well as the ones that, God, that we may be dealing with personally, God. The, the friends that we know of, the family that we know of, the acquaintances that we know of that need you to move. God, we ask that you will do just that. We know that you know the situation better than we do. You know what we need before we even ask. But God, we do ask at this moment. God, asking you to move, asking you to do what only you can do. And God, when you answer, may we return to you and give you the praise, honor, and the glory that you so richly deserve. God, this and all prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. And amen. So uh, tonight, we are going to be in the Gospel of Luke again. And uh, we're going to be in uh, verses or chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. So Luke 23, 39 to 43. And uh, last, t- last night we began our Holy Week devotions by looking at the first of seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. And last night we saw how Jesus mercifully, graciously, and lovingly extended words of forgiveness whenever he was hanging from the cross. And, and I will tell you, as I was, as I was speaking last night, It was moving to me because I know how much I fail God. And I'm thankful for his forgiveness. Well, tonight we look at the second statement of Jesus Christ from the cross. And so as we begin, I know you all know that we're in the middle of pandemic. That's that's why we're going through this. You see, uh, the coronavirus has all but shut down many parts of our country. And even if, even if you're not shut down, you're, you're still feeling some extreme effects from this. And chances are we're going to be experiencing effects from this, if not physically, economically, and in other ways for months to come. And so this, it's stressful. Many people talk about how stressful this time is. So I want to ask you, in this stressful time, what are some of the primary things that you're thinking about. Perhaps you have your children home from school, and so you've went from being a working mother or a working father uh, to being a homeschool mother or homeschool father, or maybe you're a working father and a homeschool father, or working, you know, you've become a parent that has to figure out their child's schooling, or maybe you're trying to figure out how to provide for your family because you're one of those whose hours have been cut, or maybe you've been furloughed altogether, or maybe even laid off, and you're trying to figure out how to make ends meet, what this is going to look like for you in the next few days, weeks, and months, and you're trying to figure all this out. This is the focus of your mind. Or maybe you're trying to stay healthy, you're one, you're one of the, the compromised individuals, or, or maybe you're not one of the compromised individuals, you're just one of the smart individuals and staying home. Or maybe you're uh, trying not to go insane while you're stuck in your home. You, you're getting a little bit of cabin fever and you're trying to figure out ways that you don't go bonkers and maybe you don't drive each other bonkers while you're in your home. And I'm sure there are other things going through your minds. And I'm not saying that any of those things are bad. Trying to make sure, especially now if you're at home with a school-age child, trying to make sure your child is educated or trying to make sure that you provide for your family or trying to stay healthy or trying to make sure that, that uh, this time, uh, up close time together, uh, is beneficial for your family. None of those are bad things. As well as probably much of what's going through our minds are not necessarily bad things. But let me ask you this question. How much thought... Have you given 
to those who do not know Jesus Christ during this time? How much thought have you given to, to trying to still share the gospel during this time? You see, have you, have you tried to figure out ways that you could be creative in trying to be that shining city on a hill? You know, I know you may not be amongst a bunch of people at work or uh, hopefully you're not amongst a bunch of people at Walmart or, you know, various other places. Hopefully you're being smart and all this, but you can still do that. In fact, the Great Commission didn't stop being the Great Commission just because we were, we've been told we needed to stay home. And and so tonight, our text is one of those texts that, that shows us that Jesus, in his most agonizing moment, in, in one of the darkest moments that he experienced during his walk here on earth, he's not focused on himself. He's not focused on himself. He's not focused on the situation. He's focused on the soul of a lost person. So let's read our text tonight. Luke 23, verses 39 through 43. And this is what it says. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his holy word, and let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for being here, for being wherever we are at. If it's in a church building, if it's at home, if it's at work, if it's in our car, wherever we find ourselves at this moment being ministered to by your Holy Spirit, God, we thank you for that because that we know you're there. We know that your Holy Spirit is working and guiding and open our eyes, ears, hearts, and minds so that we can be receptive to the message that your Holy Spirit is bringing us. I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit would also work within me and give me the words that we stand in need of tonight. God, not what I want to say, but what you want to say through me. Help me to surrender myself wholly and completely over to you. Hide me behind your cross, God. And may everything that I say and do point to that old rugged cross. Now this and all prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. And amen. Now I've got to tell you, this account, these four verses are amazing to me. It's a rather powerful event that occurs during this time. See, verse 39 says that one of the criminals hanging on the cross next to Jesus, begins to fuss him out. Begins basically to mock him. Saying, aren't you the Messiah? Aren't you the promised one? Look at the, look at the inscription they've nailed above you. Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. See, you're supposed to be the King. You're supposed to be the Messiah. You're supposed to be the one set apart by God. Aren't you God's chosen one? Surely God would save you. Just ask God to save you while you're here. And while you're at it, ask him to save us too. You see, this man was seeking salvation, but it wasn't the specific type of salvation that he was truly in need of. What this man was looking for was physical salvation. Get me off this cross. I don't want to die. I especially don't want to die for the sin that I've committed. And so he was asking, he was asking for, for salvation, but not in the way that he should have been asking for salvation. Because all he wanted was to get out of the hot spot at that moment. And there are a lot of people that approach God that way. God is their savior in a tight spot. They find themselves sick. 
They've got a loved one that's sick. They, get, they, they find themselves without a job or, or whatever it may be, and they, become, they, they talk to God like they're a deal maker. God, if you'll do this for me, then I'll do that for you. And so this guy is, is approaching Jesus in this very same way. He's looking for someone to save his life then and there. He was only focused at, on that moment in time. But that wasn't that man's most pressing need. He was staring death right in the face. And his greatest need at that moment was spiritual salvation. But he had grown so hard and grown so calloused and was so focused on his own wants that he neglected what he really needed and failed to see what Jesus really could do for him. Because honestly, what this man was asking for was peanuts. Jesus very easily could have saved the man and saved himself from the cruel death of the cross. But in verses 40 and 41, we hear from the other criminal. The other criminal being crucified with Jesus on the other side of him. And this other criminal speaks to the other man and chastises him for what he did. Do you not fear God? We are guilty. He recognizes his sin and the guilt of his sin. And he even recognizes that he, that both of them deserve the punishment that they are getting. And in this moment of humility, he realizes who he truly is. That he is not a saint. And that he is sinful. Extremely sinful. He is, a, he is a sinner that deserves the full, complete wrath of God. And he is in need of a Savior. And in this moment, he realizes that Jesus is the Savior. The Savior physically, yes, Jesus could have done that. But he realizes that Jesus truly is the guiltless, sinless, innocent Lamb of God who is being slaughtered for his sins. Jesus is the Savior. The ones that they were shouting about on, on Paul, the first Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Savior, save us, rescue us. That's what Jesus was doing at that moment. That's what Jesus was there for. And that criminal realized it. He realized that Jesus was there as the Savior. And in verse 42, we see that he asks Jesus to remember him when he goes into his kingdom. In this verse, we see a humbled man repent of his sins. He came to a realization that he was a sinful man and he repented of those sins. And we also see a man who places his faith it, that Jesus truly is the Messiah. So as the scripture says all along, repent and believe, repent and believe. That's what this man did. He repented of his sins. He acknowledged of his sins. He acknowledged his sins before Jesus Christ. And he, he knows he's a sinful man. And he expresses faith that Jesus truly is who he says he is. By making that statement, Jesus Remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And in, 40, and in verse 43, Jesus gives the man these words. Today you will be with me in paradise. These were words of assurance that he had been heard and that he had been saved. You see, here's the deal. This is part of what pops into my head when I think about this passage of Scripture. We tend to make salvation much harder than it actually is. We've added so much to it. Some people will say, you have to say the sinner's prayer. You have to do these specific things. You have to go down to the altar and you have to say these specific words. And if you don't do the repeat after me prayer, well, then I'm not sure you're saved. Is what some people will say. Or some people will say, if you're not baptized, if you're not fully dunked in the, in the water, then 
you're not saved or you have if you haven't done this specific thing that the typical church member does then you're not saved or if you haven't marched before the church and stood before the church and said i have repented and believed then you're not saved y'all we make it a lot more difficult than it is all the scripture says is humble yourselves before god in repentance repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this. Did that criminal do any of those things that we oftentimes make, make the, the points of salvation? Jesus didn't lead him in a prayer on the cross. Jesus didn't say, okay, repeat after me. Jesus didn't say, yes, but first you got to be baptized. Jesus didn't say, yes, but first you got to join, you got to join First Baptist Church over there on the corner. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus heard the man's repentance. He heard the man's faith and he said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus spoke words of salvation into this man's life. A man who was hanging on the cross justly condemned for his sin. Paying the price for his sin. But Jesus spoke salvation into his life because he repented and believed. The gospel isn't some secret knowledge and it's not as difficult as we want to make it out to be. You don't have to be a deep theologian to recognize the sin in your life. You don't have to have the greatest knowledge of the Bible have, have read it backwards and forwards to, to come to an understanding that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, and on the third day rose again and is ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what we believe. So I want to close with two encouragements here. If you're listening to me tonight and you have never repented and believed, then today is the day for salvation. The scripture gives this image of when one person, when one person comes to know Jesus Christ, that there is a celebration in heaven. There's a heavenly party when one person comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He wants to do that for you. And so I invite you to simply repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Go to God in prayer. And tell him, God, I confess my sins. I turn from those sins. Give me the strength to live a life that goes away from those sins. And God, I put my full faith in you. It really is that simple. If you're a child of God, then here's my encouragement for you. Share the good news. Some of the last words that Matthew records as Jesus is getting ready to ascend into the heaven is, is all authority on heaven and earth has been given unto me and to him. And so then he says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, most of us aren't going anywhere right now. But even if you were, most of us aren't going out on the mission field in Africa or Asia or some other country. Most of us, our mission field is our work, our place of employment. Maybe the place we go to school. Maybe our community in which we live, our neighborhood. Who knows? But we've all been given a place to minister. And right now, that place may be your influence on social media. But do everything that you can to win people. Do everything that you can to make disciples. I remind you what Jesus was going through during this time. He was being crucified. Yet he still thought of the salvation of that man hanging next to him. 
I don't think you're going through anything bad enough that would excuse you from the call to make disciples. I hope that you'll follow Jesus' example. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for the lessons taught to us by Jesus as he hung on the cross. He modeled forgiveness. People that weren't even asking forgiveness, he, he forgave them. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then he modeled being all about the Father's business as he offered words of salvation to the criminal hanging next to him. Jesus had every right to be so inwardly focused, to be focused on the pain and the hurt and the agony and the spiritual torture that he was experiencing at that moment. But instead, he thought about the dying thief next to him who was dying both physically but ultimately facing the punishment of hell. I'm thankful that Jesus offered him those words of salvation all, all that man had to do was repent of his sins and believe, and you took care of the rest, God. I thank you for that. And I thank you that that is the message that we as Christians get to share with the world, that you don't have to do anything specific. In fact, our, our good deeds cannot come close to earning us salvation. We need Jesus Christ. And so it simply is it's a work of God that we submit to. God, I pray if there is anyone that hears this message that does not know you, that God, your Holy Spirit will help to open their eyes and ears and hearts and minds so that they can receive, and God, so that they can make that decision to follow you. God, I pray that as we go about our, our days throughout the rest of this week, God, that we will be reminded of the significance of this time. As we make our way to, to Good Friday, may we take some time to reflect upon the reasons that you had to die, that you died for us. God, we thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you are doing, and thank you for all that you're going to do. So now, God, we ask this in all prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. And amen. Hope you'll join us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock as we continue our Holy Week devotions. In grace and peace.